It's the oldest trick in the book. Someone kidnaps an important person, demands a ransom, takes the ransom, then never turns over the missing person. In 16th century Peru, this is exactly what happened when Spanish conquistadors demanded a ransom for releasing Incan Emperor Atahualpa. The Spanish demanded two buildings worth of silver and gold, but when only half the ransom could be paid, the Spanish killed the emperor and a new Incan warrior used the remaining coinage to fund a war of revenge. The treasure of Yanganatis would disappear upon the warriors' failed war, and the mythical treasure funding their war effort disappeared with their defeat. So join me as we attempt to track down the lost treasure of the Yanganatis. When Spanish conquistadors showed up in Peru in the 16th century, the outnumbered Spaniards needed a strategy for conquering an empire with an army outnumbering them by incalculable amounts. Their plan? Kidnap the Inca emperor, force his empire to pay a ransom for his release, and demand the immediate surrender of the empire to Spanish control. When Incan officials tasked with paying the ransom, could only accumulate half of what the Spanish demanded by the day of the swap, things turned south fast. The emperor was killed, the ransom was scattered, and the Inca began preparing for revenge. So what exactly was the ransom? The Spanish demanded one room's volume in gold and one room's volume in silver. But it's likely that the ransom also included platinum and electrum, an alloy of silver and gold. After the death of Atahualpa, the half of the ransom collected on time seems to have disappeared before the Spanish could collect, and any evidence of the Incan warrior's ability to pay the rest, past due, seems to elude the history books. The treasure was different from the treasures we've discussed in earlier episodes. Rather than being a single artifact, it was a collection of gold and silver, and maybe other precious stones, likely in the form of golden items like small statues, masks, cups, etc. Atahualpa was the one who suggested the ransom, telling the Spaniards he could pay them with one room filled with gold and another filled with silver in order to pay for his release, and the gold likely would have come from across his empire, considering the Spanish likely captured the emperor's private treasury when they captured him. The treasure was meant to be used as a ransom for Atahualpa's release. Instead, Inca warriors evacuated the ransom payment after their emperor's death and hid it deep in the Ecuadorian valley. Incan general Ramin Yangui then led Inca warriors in an effort to avenge their emperor's death, drive the Spanish out of the region, and return their empire to former glory. Given how the Inca empire functioned, however, it's likely that treasure didn't stay in that hiding place for long. The Inca Empire didn't function like a normal empire. The royal line wasn't as respected as those in Europe or China, where transitions from father to son typically went smoothly. Every new Incan emperor had to reconquer and re-annex the empire every single time. That means that Atahualpa's death would have as it did with the death of every Inca emperor, completely dissolved the empire. In order to unite the empire under a single army to challenge the Spanish, General Ramin Yaoui likely had to use some of that hidden treasure to pay off rival Inca warlords to bribe them into joining his coalition. Technically speaking, the treasure may have never been seen, Spanish chroniclers never saw any of that ransom payment, and reports of the treasure only appear in later accounts. One Spaniard named Valverde reported having an Incan wife whose family led the Spaniard to the treasure 50 years after Atahualpa's death, and later became extremely wealthy. The problem is, there's no evidence this Valverde person ever existed. In the 1850s, English botanist Richard Spruce was said to have found a map that led him to the treasure, 
which later treasure seeker Barth Blake followed to also find the treasure. After Barth Blake's account, no further explorers have reported finding the lost treasure. Barth had gone back with as much treasure as he could carry to New York to raise funds to go back to the treasure and collect more of it, but he mysteriously disappeared after going overboard on a ship. Further attempts to find the treasure led to some explorers' deaths due to the treasure's terrain and dangerous weather, but no one since has ever claimed to have found any part of the treasure. So where is the treasure? According to the legends, it's somewhere in the Yanganatas, a massive mountainous region of Ecuador. I'm not convinced. First of all, I question whether any treasure was collected to pay the ransom in the first place. Some gold was collected, enough to fill half of a room, before the cash flow halted and no further payments could be paid. That suggests the Inca couldn't fill two full rooms of silver and gold. If the rest of the ransom was on the way, General Ruminyaui likely used it to pay for his soldiers and buy the allegiance of the other Inca warlords. The treasure of the Yanganadas may simply be a work of fiction built up around the quasi-historical figure of Valverde. If the ransom really did exist, it likely got dissected among several beneficiaries to pay for an expensive war that led to the collapse of an empire. The real story of what happened to the vast treasuries of the Inca Empire is that they ended up in the hands of the Spanish who divided the loot among the army, the monarchy, and the papacy. In our next episode, we'll try to track down the lost great bell of Damazedi, so be sure to hit the subscribe button to not miss out. This video was made possible by contributions to this channel's Patreon from viewers like you. Thank you.